Hey guys, it's Summer Rain from Homestead Brooklyn. And when I asked you on Facebook about what your biggest challenge was when it came to houseplants, over 200 of you said lighting. Now there is so much that we could talk about when it comes to lighting that I'm going to separate them out into a multi-part series. The first episode, which will of course be this episode, will broadly discuss how plants use light. Light is so integral to a plant's existence, so when you cut off light, you essentially cut off a plant's very food source. So when people ask, well, I live in a dark space, what plant should I get? I'm kind of tempted to say, hmm, a plastic one? But there's hope for you too, because in a future video, I'll go over lighting options, so don't fret just yet. In the meantime, let's talk about light. You could think of visible light as a narrow band of electromagnetic radiation that is visible to us, largely between 400 to 740 nanometers. And nanometer, for all of you who just are wondering, is a billionth of a meter. Now, plants respond to this band of electromagnetic light just as humans do. However, we're far more sensitive to the green portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, meaning that color of light looks brighter compared to other wavelengths, whereas plants are sensitive to all visible wavelengths. Now definitely keep this in mind because this will come into play in a future video. Even though plants can utilize all wavelengths of light, it's the blue, violet, and red range that is the real sweet spot for most green foliage plants, as that's where the maximum rate of photosynthesis and chlorophyll synthesis is happening. Now that's why you see a lot of red and blue grow lights on the market. Also something we'll get to in a future episode. You may be thinking, well, the more light I provide a plant, the better, right? It's not really. Plants can and do exhibit stress if they are experiencing too much light, particularly if they're getting too intense of light. Now, just like UV rays can damage our skin, they can also damage a plant's leaves, causing something called photooxidation, which is exhibited by leaves turning yellow, as you could see in my fig tree here. And when leaves turn yellow, it means they are losing chlorophyll, which means they are losing the ability to photosynthesize, which means they are losing the ability to eat. That's why it's not really necessary to have UV elements of light in your home. It not only will hurt your eyes, but there's just far too much energy in that electromagnetic wave band for the plant to use. Conversely, as the wave band approaches infrared, there typically is too little energy for the plant. Though some plants like Schlumbergera, which is the Christmas or Thanksgiving cactus, and others require it to help with triggering flowering. Oh, and the last thing, we can also thank the plants we eat for our vision and our ability to see light in the first place because the rods and cones in our eyes actually require pigments that only plants produce. So they just don't help you see better, they help you see, period. A good excuse to eat your carrots. I hope you enjoyed that episode on lighting. Be sure to tune in here next week on Thursday at 7 a.m. for more great information on plants in your home. If you love these, don't forget to subscribe and follow along on my Instagram at Homestead Brooklyn and on my website at homesteadbrooklyn.com. Later!